Today, I want to take you through a demo of one of the story modes inside OpenArt. If you knew OpenArt, it's got all kinds of video and image and sound creation tools designed to help you basically be a mini little film studio so you can create within it. Uh, and one of the things that it's got that's very unique is this story system. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you some stories that people have made in the past. Then I'm going to demo the entire music video creation process. For our first example, we've got this medieval girl up on stage. She's some sort of 3D animated character, obviously, and she is dancing and singing. She's got guys in the background with the castle and the shields and all that. But she does have the standard AI image problem, which is that her lip sync does not match up very well with this. Uh, sometimes if you use some of the really detailed AI tools, you can get the lip sync to match up. But when you're trying to create an entire character and a background and all that, it just didn't. So when I plan a video like this, one of the first things I think about is how can I film it in a way that it doesn't have to show the character's lips moving because they just don't match up. Next up, we've got Ishtar, the goddess of desire here, who is dancing higher and burning fire. Uh, pretty cool. They did a good job of getting the arms and the burning, and you notice that nothing has to lip sync up because the lips aren't meant to be moving by this character. This isn't the character singing the song. Next up, we got this one, and same thing. Her lip sync isn't matching up at all. It's not really very close to the words, so be careful with this. But I do have to say, I actually really like this song, so I'm going to use it as the song in my music video that I demo here. In case you haven't heard yet, Open Art has a contest going on right now for the next few weeks where anybody can create a music video on their platform and submit it for a whole bunch of different categories and a whole bunch of different awards. I think like $60,000 worth of awards all total. So I'm going to make my submission on the video here and teach you my entire process and let you walk through it with me. In exchange for this, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like and subscribe button. It helps me know what kind of content you like and therefore what kind of content I should make. But before we start doing that, I do want to show you this one last video. This is one where, once again, I think they did a good job with it. This was smart. They put a motorcycle helmet on their character, so you can't see their face in any of the shots. So you can have all the music and the imagery and the feelings that you want to create with it, but you don't ever have to worry about the lip syncing being off. I'm going to head up here to create our video, and it gives me four options here. A singing video, which is what I do not recommend. It usually screws those up. A narrative video, which is what we're actually going to do. A visualizer video, which is just images that are moving to the vibes of the music. And then a lyrics video. And that one doesn't take a whole lot of creativity. It's just kind of words on the screen. So we're going to go with the narrative. And the first thing it's going to ask us to do is pick a song. So we could upload something if we had it ourselves. But I want to use one of the recommended ones from the contest. And I like this Jenny Ortega one that I saw over here. I think that'll make a fun video. So I'm going to select that and then I have to pick my character down here. Now you can see I've got one character that I custom made that was for a previous video. The rest of these are kind of standard characters that have been given to you inside open art. Uh, there is a process of uploading a bunch of different pictures if you ever want to create your own character. And it can be really useful because once you have that you can put that into these videos and it knows what that character looks like from different angles. So if they turn and move things don't get all wonky and weird. I'm going to choose Lulu the giraffe as my main character. I'm going to allow my character to change outfits and I am going to set this to a one take style. That means that each clip will have a built in transition already over to the next scene. Below that, I can set my aspect ratio. I can match the video to the beat. I can set captions for the video across it. And I can choose both the image and video model. Here you can see I have character, flux context, chat GPT's model to make images from. But if you go down here to video model, it seems like you only have this clean 2.1 Pro. Well, the reason it seems that way is because right now it's set on 1080p and most AI video models have specific resolutions they work at. So if I go over here and change this to 720, now I get a whole bunch more options like Hi Luo, which is one of my favorites, Sea Dance, Pixiverse. And you'll notice the prices to render will change since each model costs a different amount of credits. Clean 2.1 at 720p is 295 credits. Hi Luo is 215 credits at 720p also. So this will add up when you start seeing an entire story put together, which is going to be a combination of, you know, 30, 40, 50 different video clips. 80 credits per clip is going to add up. Next, I needed a storyline. So I went to ChatGPT and asked it to create a storyline for a high energy global dance music video inspired by Gangnam Style. But it turns out that you can only have 500 characters in your storyline. So I had to go back and create a little bit of a shorter version and put that into here. 
Then I came down to the preview storyboard here, and I'm gonna go ahead and preview this storyboard before I make it, because it is 440 credits to preview it and over 5,000 to make it. And the process of creating my storyboard took about three minutes, but in the end, I got this. And you can see this is a list of the still images and the animation for each and every video clip that has to be put together to make this. So video clips generally are right around six seconds. So you can imagine that a two minute video is gonna need 25, 30 of them. And this storyboard process is going to create a still image for each of them. Now you can see each of these still images has our main character Lulu in them. And that's because they're using prompts like medium close-up in a dance studio with floor-to-ceiling windows showing a skyline lulu stands on polished wood flooring facing a wall of matte acoustic panels no mirrors wearing blank sunbeams cast warm stripes colored tape marks on the floor water bottle and speaker in background so that's what it's going to use to create an image and then that image is going to be the basis for that video clip so it's got most of my images rendered right now as I scroll through. I can re-render any if I want, if I don't like the way that it turned out, or I can go in and type into any of these boxes and modify the prompt and change the idea for the image and then create a new one there. And this is a good idea to do before you start creating the videos. I came across a few like this that seemed to be stuck and no matter how long I waited, they never rendered. So I clicked that button up there, retry image, and you can see it created a second copy of that image that was being made there. And then I can pick either one of those to make my next video. And once I have all of the images rendered and I'm happy with them all, then it's time to go down here and generate the full story. You can see that's gonna be about 5,000 credits. So you wanna make sure you've got your images figured out and you like them before you click on that. Cause once that starts, it's gonna make videos for each and every one of these images and there's no stopping it. It's an automated process. So click that 5,000 credits spent and your story is on the way. It took about seven and a half minutes to generate that, but this is what I got. And this is gonna go on for about 90 more seconds till it reaches the end of the two minute mark. It's all these little six second long video clips that it's strung together from spot to spot. And I'm gonna show you how it put those together. Now you can also see at the bottom, it's pulled the text from this song and put it on the bottom there. But unfortunately, it's definitely got some mistakes. So I'm gonna show you how we get around that and get past that text later. But first of all, I wanna go back and look at the storyboard so you can see how it created these videos. Look at the first two images on our storyboard. The first one has Lulu standing on the street, the crosswalk with the cabs and all that in the city behind it. And then the next one has Lulu standing down in the subway with the subway train coming up next to the map. Now watch the video. You'll see that it begins on that image of him standing on the stripes in the street and he transitions into the subway by the map. Now I'm gonna roll the screen down one step. The second video will begin with that image of our giraffe standing next to the map inside the subway. And it will end with this turnstile, this electronic and metal turnstile by the subway. And on and on it goes. Each video is one step further using the last image from one video to become the first image for the next and the first image from the next video to become the last image for that. For some reason, it doesn't show on the screen that there is an ending image for each of these, but I assure you it is because that's how it creates these sequences. Sometimes you end up with a really good transition like that one. Sometimes you end up with a really terrible transition like that one. Did you notice the magical disappearing fan that's sitting by the copier? First of all, I have no idea what it's doing next to the copier. Second of all, I don't know why it just disappears out of nowhere, but this is something that AI regularly does. It's gonna mis make mistakes when it's rendering videos, so you've gotta be ready to go back and replace and fix these mistakes throughout it. You're not gonna get a perfect rendition of every single six minute clip leading to a two minute full video on your first try. There's just no way. Plan on going back and fixing clips. 
Now, unfortunately, Open Art didn't do a very good job of making this easy. I think they tried to become a video editor as well as a uh, video creation platform, and it doesn't really work to do both. So you can go over here into your timeline and you can see all these different clips, but there's not a really easy way to render and replace something else in them here inside Open Art. So I'm going to show you how to get all of these videos out of Open Art so that you can throw them into Premiere or CapCut or whatever software you decide to use and put it all together and make the edits where you need. Now I haven't found any way to export these from the timeline. Um, we will be going back to the storyboard, but there's one important thing that you do need to pick up for information here from the timeline, and that is the speed of the clip. So you can see each of these clips is at a different speed. 0.86, 1.23, 1.31, and you're going to need to know these values because when we export these video clips, they're all going to come at a standard one speed and you're going to need to compress some of them and extend some of them to make a match up and, and rebuild this in Premiere before you start making your edits. To export these videos, just head over to the storyboard, right click on the video and select save video as. I have no idea why it doesn't have a normal download button like you do for all the videos that you render elsewhere, but for some reason, that's the way that you save them out of the storyboard. So just right click, save as, call the file what you need, download it. Next, you'll want to drop it into Premiere and go set the speed to the speed that you need for that specific clip. Make sure you've got it for all the clips. You can push them together. And this is how you're going to duplicate the workflow that you had. Now that you've got it in Premiere, it's time to start improving it. And I'm going to begin with this first clip because I really wasn't a big fan of it. While I thought the transition was pretty cool, I didn't like the fact that it showed his mouth moving and bobbing around the whole time at the beginning. And I didn't want that. I wanted it to stay still like he's just chilling and listening to the music. So I updated the prompt to say, not singing yet, mouth still. And I re-rendered it. And this is what I got. Lulu singing on the street with no transition. And that's because I made a mistake. You can see there is a start frame for this, but no end frame. So I need to add an end frame onto this prompt. Click here, use first frame from next shot. And now when I render it, I'm gonna get a transition over to that next image. Unfortunately though, it didn't really listen to my commands very well. Uh, he continued to sing and move around. And then this transition is super weird, just running sideways. So not a big fan of that one at all. This sideways run into the map just doesn't fit. And that's the most frustrating part about doing any work with AI video. It reminds me of that math you used to have to do in high school. It was a guess and check. Do you remember that? Where you'd have to guess at different numbers and try and check them and see what fit. That's what it feels like you're doing with prompts with video. And the hard part is that you're spending hard earned money on each. I know how frustrating this can be. Obviously the start and finish images are a big step and the models keep getting better and better. But once again, I had to go back and try again and update my prompt and render it again just to try to get something that I really liked for the beginning. And this one didn't really seem any better either. He still is talking. He kind of runs through in a weird way. So far, the first one was really the best of all that I had. But at this point, I decided I needed to go about this a completely different way. And I wanted to try some different models to render these videos instead. So I went to the storyboard images and I right clicked on them and clicked to save image as and saved each of the start and finish images. And then I went to the standard video creation section in open art and I put in the start and finish images, pasted in my prompt and started by creating an image in Hiluo of the same prompt beginning and end images. Next, I tried Sora 2, which is the newest video model from OpenAI, but unfortunately it only allows a starting image. So that was not going to get me where I needed to. So I went back and tried Sea Dance next. And while those two were processing, I went ahead and pulled up VO3 and ran the same image and prompt through VO3. So now we can kind of look at it and see what does it look like in Kling and VO3 and Sea Dance and Hailuo and how do these compare to each other? The first one to finish was Hailuo and it created this, which I actually thought was really awesome. I like the way that it did that transition with it tipping up and following the head from above. Um, I thought this was the cleanest start to any of them and the most interesting. Sea Dance, on the other hand, gave me this one which I thought was absolutely terrible. So we'll just move on. VO3 gave me this one, which I thought had some really interesting lifelike motion when he puts those headphones on, but that fade was just pretty weak. So overall, not that impressed. 
In the end, I picked the High Luo clip because I felt like it had the most interesting start, and that's something you really need for a video like this. You got to catch someone's attention and get them paying attention to it. So I put that one in. I set the timing so that it matched and had the same transition, and then I kept going, updating clip after clip. Sometimes they were worse like that one with the weird zoom and jump cut. Sometimes I got better ones like this where Lulu dances her way backwards into the next scene. Eventually, I put all of my clips into Premiere because it allows me to do one extra thing that you just can't do when you're working strictly in open art, and that's to change part of a clip. I liked this transition where Lulu moves from the beach to the pavement, but I wanted the dancing to start right at this spot where the music suddenly gets loud again. So I sped up the clip leading into this till it ended right at that transition point. Then I picked out the next point right after that where Lulu had begun dancing and I clipped it there as well. Finally, I exported the frames that came from the beginning and end of this gap so that I knew what I needed to get as a video to fill in that little middle section. To create that video, I uploaded those images into a new storyboard and gave it the prompt, Lulu begins dancing back and forth, loving the music. Then I dropped that clip in and fit it to the space that I had so that instead of this section where the music and the dancing don't line up, notice how the beat just dropped there and Lulu was still till there. I wanted the timing of that to be correct, so I changed it on this one, and instantly when the beat drops, Lulu is dancing, the sunglasses, all of that, just by fitting that little extra video clip in the middle. And I went on and did this over and over and over again to fix all of those little mistakes throughout the video. Exporting frames, then rendering videos that fit those specific sections. By the end, I had picked about 10 different sections where I had added additional video clips. You can see anywhere on my timeline that there's a section raised above it. That's where I exported frames, created a new video clip, and stuck it in the middle to add extra dancing or to fix a transition that I didn't like. And this is how you take the rough, raw video that you get straight out of open art and turn it into a polished one that's ready to submit to the contest. Is it? 